Well, hello everybody. My name is uh, Maarten Terhune and uh, I will be presenting today uh, my study called Linguistic Features Predicting Trustworthiness in the Sharing Economy. And the co-authors of uh, my study are uh, Jonas Moons, Amber Rottetop and Renzo Korte. Uh, but before I start off, I would like to ask you the following question. Which of you has ever used one of these services? So, yeah, in this crowd is almost 100%. <laughs> Almost 100%. The next question is, which of you had, has ever had a bad experience using these services? Oh, we'll see five, five hands or something. Well, luckily for you, or unluckily for you, uh, you're not the only ones. Um, recently, this book came out called Airbnb <laughs> Hell. You can, um, you can order it via Amazon. It's just released. And it is a book full of, well, it says in this subtitle, travel nightmares from guests and hosts. And they also give tips how to avoid them. But it clearly shows that consuming in a sharing economy is not without risks. And that's why, and it's been stressed already today by Paolo, trust is so important for a transaction to happen. So for a successful transaction in a sharing economy, I think uh, most... Yeah, most authors agree, trust is a vital ingredient. But what, what makes trust in a sharing economy so different from, let's say, uh, regular uh, commercial transactions? Well, there are numerous aspects, and I will uh, give you four. Uh, there's a triad of, of relationships. Uh, Paolo also already, in his uh, last slide, uh, uh, pictured this triad. It's a between a peer, the platform, and a product. Uh, which makes uh, you have these different relations you have to handle. Uh, transactions are not only online, but they're also offline. Uh, they, uh, yeah, consuming the sharing economy means that you also meet each other offline, uh, often at, its, uh, at the doorstep of the seller. Um, there might be a higher risk involved because there's no transfer uh, of ownership. And when you're a seller in the economy, in the sharing economy, it means that when you rent out your drill, you want to receive it in, uh, in a good state. And that's not always the case. And uh, when, <coughs> when things are go bad, uh, who can you address to, um, yeah, to the fact that the drill uh, was broken? And lastly, if you include service exchange activities in your definition of the sharing economy, that would mean that these activities are more complex than just renting out a product. So, um, uh, exchanging or doing transactions via Airbnb um, uh, entails more, um, more activities like uh, opening doors uh, to a stranger, receiving them in your house, than just um, exchanging the, your drill via Peerbe. So trust in the sharing economy is something different than just uh, tr trust in a regular economy. And from a buyer's perspective, one of the main sources to derive trust from is the online profile of a seller. And an online profile of a seller has several trust cues, so to say. So for example, there's reputation, which is a very important trust cue. There's a profile picture, uh, which is also important to see how somebody else is look like. Um, and what's also quite an important element in those online profile are the, are the self descriptions of a seller. And that's why that's uh, where I'm interested in. Um, <coughs> so that's why my research question is, which linguistic features of the profile text of a seller in the sharing economy are predictive of his or her perceived trustworthiness? And to answer this research question, I used uh, a case study of Share Your Meal, and in Holland we call it Thuis Afgehaald. It's a uh, sharing platform in the Netherlands where people can share meals with each other in their own neighborhood. And it started off in 2012, and since then it's been quite successful. It has accumulated more than 75,000 users, uh, of which there are more than 10,000 cooks and more than 64,000 foodies. And you see me here standing in the kitchen of a cook, getting my uh, homemade meal. So in this case, I was the foodie uh, standing next to uh, this lovely cook. She lives right in... Uh, in my, uh, in my neighborhood. Um, so this was a platform I studied as an example of the sharing economy. 
And to give you an idea how an online profile looks like uh, of a cook, I made a screenshot here. And you can see there's uh, lots of room for a profile picture, but there's also uh, a prominent place for the self description of a, of a seller. So a cook um, uh, yeah, presents himself to the foodies via this uh, online self description. And everybody is allowed to uh, type his own text or the length or determine the length of the text. Um, so, but to analyze the linguistic features of this text, we use a text analysis software called Look. And Look is a text analysis software program which has predefined categories and scans a text and uh, uh, counts the number of words con uh, relating to a, uh, uh, a category which belongs to his uh, dictionary. And to give you an example how this text analysis uh, program goes about, I've made an example analysis here of a, a Sherry Mew profile text. Um, in this profile, you use uh, three uh, linguistic categories, namely articles in blue, uh, prepositions in green, and cooking related words in red. So you can see that uh, I've color coded the words here uh, as an example. And you can see that the program counts the number of words relating to a category and returns a percentage of the total amount of words in the in the total uh, text. Um, so that's how, the, how this program works. And to, de to determine on uh, which linguistic features to focus on, uh, we developed several kind, uh, several, yeah, five hypotheses uh, based on uh, several theoretical insights. First of all, we used uncertainty reduction theory, which states that people are uh, uh, actively uh, searching to reduce their uncertainty in interaction with other people uh, and trying to get as much as information as possible. Um, so that's why we state that the profiles uh, of sellers who have more words are, more, are perceived as more trustworthy uh, than cooks who don't. So the linguistic feature uh, here is the number of words. Um, also, another way to reduce uncertainty is, is via the use of concrete language. Uh, when you use concrete language, you can uh, depict um, objects with more specific and detailed representation, with, which allows for more and faster processing by the receiver. Um, and indicators of um, concrete language are articles and prepositions. So that's why we state uh, that uh, online profiles who have more words relating to concreteness are perceived as more trustworthy. Furthermore, um, at, a sh at a platform as, sh as share, no share Your Meal, um, community feelings are quite important. So that's why we also think that feelings of closeness, when uh, a cook expresses these feelings through his online profile, can induce uh, trustworthiness. So that's why we, use, that's why we uh, state that an online profile uh, using more of expressing more feelings of closeness will be perceived as more trustworthy. <coughs> um, also, literature shows that when salespeople are quite enthusiastic, this also drives their uh, the, the number of sales they do. So uh, we also think that when a cook um, shows his enthusiasm in his profile, uh, this will also positive positively relates to his perceived trustworthiness. <laughs> so that's why. Um, and as indicators, we use uh, positive emotions, there's words relating to positive emotions, and also exclamation marks. Perhaps you know from a WhatsApp conversation, when somebody <laughs> uses a lot of exclamation marks, he's very happy. <laughs> uh, and lastly, expertise is also an important dimension of perceived trustworthiness. Um, so in this case, in the case of share your meal, how can you express your expertise? Well, that might be via using a lot of words related to cooking. So like homemade or baking or sustainable. Um, so our last hypothesis is that online profiles who have uh, more words relating to cooking are perceived um, uh, as more trustworthy. <coughs> so to, um, to uh, find an answer to these hypotheses, we use the following research method. We uh, let uh, actual share your meal buyers rate the profiles of share your meal cooks. And we did this by uh, first develop developing a perceived trustworthiness scale, which we developed in a pre-study. 
Um, this resulted in six items, which uh, uh, were measured on a seven-point Likert type scale, uh, referring to the three dimensions of trustworthiness, uh, namely ability, benevolence, and integrity. Um, and we used an online survey to do this rating task. Um, almost 8,000 invitations were sent out, um, of which uh, we received user, uh, yeah, useful feedback from uh, 203 respondents. And in the final analysis, we included 259 profiles, where, which received five ratings or more. And lastly, to determine the linguistic features of a profile, we used the Look uh, Dutch Dictionary of 2007. And to account for the cooking-related words, we, uh, we self-developed a cooking dictionary, because it didn't exist, uh, obviously, in the uh, Dutch Dictionary. Um, to analyze our, re our data, we used the following uh, uh, analysis strategy. We used a cross-classified mixed effects model to account for the random effects on the profile level and on the respondent level. And as covariates, we used the, uh, the different linguistic features, and we also controlled for various uh, respondent characteristics like age, gender, education, uh, the number of recognized profile, profiles, uh, and the disposition to trust of a respondent. Well, to give you the results, I hope you're just as uh, curious as me. <laughs> um, on the y-axis, you see the different uh, linguistic features, and on the x-axis, uh, you can see the, uh, the size of the coefficients. Um, uh, just to say, I made a log 2 transformation on the word count, and the linguistic features here are, um, are presented with a 10% increase for, yeah, for comp comprehension uh, goals. So you can see that the number of words in a profile has a <laughs> quite a large effect on the perceived trustworthiness, and it's also significant. Uh, we also found some significant effects for the use of positive emotions, uh, prepositions, and the use of cooking-related words. Uh, we didn't find, uh, oh yeah, uh, sorry, lastly, we found also a uh, significant uh, effect, uh, but this was uh, a negative uh, effect for articles, um, and we didn't find significant significant effects for uh, words relating to yeah, feelings of closeness, so the U category and uh, exclamation marks. This, uh, the last one could also be an explana explanation for that, that uh, not a lot of people use exclamation marks in their profiles. So uh, going back to our hypotheses. Um, we see that our hypothesis one uh, was supported, so the more words that are used in an online profile uh, is perceived as more trustworthy. Um, our hypothesis two, the level of concreteness that is reached in an online profile has some contradictory findings. We see that the use of articles uh, had a uh, negative effect, which we didn't uh, uh, expect. And uh, the use of prep prepositions has a positive effect. Um, the, our hypothesis three was not supportive, supported, so um, we didn't find that uh, online profiles that used mo uh, more words relating to, to the other, uh, so more social words, uh, didn't end up in, uh, in a more perceived trustworthiness score. And the last two hypotheses were also supportive. So the use of positive emotions, words relating to positive emotions, and showing off your expertise via cooking-related words uh, had a significant uh, positive effect on perceived trustworthiness. So to sum up, um, perceptions of trustworthiness are indeed influenced by linguistic styles, and uh, several psychological constructs may play a role in, uh, in this. So uh, uncertainty reduction um, uh, might, account, uh, might give an explanation for this, but also the level of concreteness, also uh, the use of positive emotions um, and the use of expertise in an online profile um, uh, <coughs> can induce perceived trustworthiness. We also found a, um, yeah, 
an effect, uh, a negative effect for articles, for the use of articles, which did not concur uh, with current literature. Uh, one explanation might be that we based our, our hypotheses on English literature, um, where they found a positive effect for the use of articles, and our study obviously um, researched Dutch online profiles, which, has, uh, which, which might have uh, a different meaning in the Dutch language. So, if there are any questions, I would be more, to happy, more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much for your attention.